Hey everybody, it's Dwayne, Developer Evangelist at Git Kraken. I'm here with some exciting highlights from the Git 2.37 release, which was released on June 27th, 2022. There's a lot in this release, a lot of performance improvements, so make sure you're updating to the latest version of Git, and let's dig into it. First up is one I'm very excited about, and that is the addition of the Git-V and the Git-H commands. This brings it in line with a lot of other command line tools where you can type dash V to get version instead of having to type out dash dash version. And same way with help, you can type dash H now instead of having to type out dash dash help. Save a few characters and also bring it in line with how a lot of people are expecting it to work. Git log now has a new option, sense as filter. There's this situation you can get in and especially true with a lot of people working on a project where someone has a faulty clock and you can get commits that are parents of commits, but have newer timestamps for some reason. If you just use git log sense and then define that time frame, it will stop as soon as it hits, well, time X. Sense as filter will keep digging through the parentage until it's sure it's back to before X is defined. Speaking of large repos with a lot going on, in those scenarios, it's pretty common to end up with unreachable objects out there that the garbage collection needs to go spend the cycles to go figure out how to deal with. Now there's this idea injected called cruft packs, which you can run on your own if you run a git garbage collection cruft and then tell it the time frame to package up and eliminate. It makes it a little more efficient, and especially if you run git garbage collection a lot, you should see some great performance gains. Also speaking of very large projects, sparse index is now considered ready for prime time. Git stash and git show were two of the last things being worked on before it was leaving experimental. So now git stash works a lot faster than it did in earlier implementations and git show will work as expected when you're only working with a partial clone. Related to that, git remote v will now by default show you the list object filter associated with a remote. Used to be you had to go manually look this up. So to speed up everybody's workflow, now it by default will show you which list object filter is associated with well, what you're working with. One of the ways that the Git team is improving performance throughout Git is by rewriting some of the old code. Uh, Git add was originally written in Perl and Git add I, the interactive mode, was noticeably taking a performance ding from that. Rewritten in C, it's much faster and I think you're gonna get a better experience, especially if you're on Windows. If you are a person that relies on git diff tree and standard in, uh, you probably noticed that there are some bugs with it, and especially around git k, and that's been reported for the last couple of years. This has been corrected, and now you're going to see this very much in line with what you would expect out of performance from something like log. Speaking of diffs, if you're a person who runs uh, external diff commands a lot, you probably are going to benefit from this one a great deal. The way that Git internally was writing to temp files, they found they can improve that by generating a new temporary directory under the same base name and using that temp file instead. If you don't use external diffs, you might want to try it now. It's been improved. Git bisect is an extremely powerful tool that I really love. It helps me quickly transverse the graph to find exactly where a bit of code was introduced, whether I'm looking for a feature or where a bug was first introduced. One of the problems with git bisect is when you run git bisect start, it doesn't really tell you anything. You don't know if it's running or not. They fixed that, it's verbose now, and it will tell you, hey, it's running. Lastly, if you are thinking about getting involved in the git project, there's a new doc for you, waiting for you under documentation, toolsforgit.txt. Uh, right now it contains some tips for VS Code users and Emacs users, but it sets the foundation for a lot more knowledge sharing in the future, so we should all be contributing back to git. There's a lot going on in this release. I just scratched the tip of the iceberg. Definitely go read the full release notes. Make sure you're updating to the latest, greatest version to get to get all of these amazing features. And I'll see you in the next release.